Of Ayman Netanyahu has spoken to say that Lebanon faces destruction on the same scale as seen in the Gaza Strip. Let's hear the words of Israel's Prime Minister, who spoke a few moments ago. Stand up and take your country back. You have an opportunity that hasn't existed in decades. An opportunity to take care of the future of your children and grandchildren. You have an opportunity to save Lebanon before it falls into the abyss of a long war that will lead to destruction and suffering like we see in Gaza. Let's bring in our correspondent in Jerusalem, Iris Makler, who's uh, standing by. Iris, a very good evening to you. Uh, tell us more about this Netanyahu address. It's interesting, isn't it? It's the second address in English uh, to the people of Lebanon. And in fact, it mirrors an address that he also gave in English to the people of Iran. And he is um, saying that it's Israel's war is not with the people of Lebanon or the people of Iran, it's with their tyrannical leaders. Uh, and in the case of uh, Lebanon, he's saying it's with Hezbollah, the Islamist militant group, the Shia militant group uh, that has taken over Iranian, sorry, Lebanese politics at the behest of Iran uh, and turned it upside down, uh, created trauma and trouble in that state. And he is more or less saying, you know, we have done part of the job for you, says Israel's prime minister. Israel has removed uh, Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah. It's removed many of the military leaders uh, beneath Nasrallah. And then he throws the ball into the court of the people of Lebanon and says, now you step up and do the rest. It's an interesting tactic. I'm not sure if it works, but, you know, it's now the third time he's using it. So obviously he thinks it's effective. Interestingly, also, just as a side issue, if you like, in this conflict, one of the things that Benjamin Netanyahu referred to tonight was the fact that Israel had removed an Ashek Nasrallah, the uh, Hezbollah leader, overall leader, and then his successor, uh, his cousin Hashem Safiyadin. It's interesting because we haven't heard a confirmation of that from uh, Lebanese sources. We do know from Lebanese sources that um, since an airstrike in the early hours of Friday morning, they, ha they have lost contact uh, with this man, with um, Hashem Safiyadin. But they do not say that he he has died, uh, even though, you know, it is now over four days, there has been no contact with him. We heard from another Lebanese Hezbollah leader, the deputy leader, uh, Nas uh, earlier today, and what he said was interesting. He said there'll be an orderly conduct of, of a, a election or appointment of a second, a new leader for Hezbollah. But he also didn't mention Hashem Safiyadin. So his fate is up in the air. Lebanese not, not confirming it. Israel saying that he has been killed. Netanyahu's words, Iris, are basically saying that Lebanon will be turned into a second Gaza Strip in terms of the destruction that awaits. Uh, some might see that as a, a full-on declaration as war of war. I, I, don't, I don't know whether you think it goes that far, but certainly the ground incursion is continuing. The ground incursion is continuing. I didn't read his words as a threat of a, of, um, of the you know the Gazaization of Lebanon, uh, but I said I read him to be warning, uh, warning the people of Lebanon to take steps to prevent that. But definitely, the ground war in the south of the country, that limited incursion, is ongoing. Uh, and what we know that that means at the moment is heavy fighting, actually. You know, we have heard reports that um, from Israel's defence minister saying, you know, Hezbollah's head has been removed, it's rudderless, it's leaderless. Nevertheless, we do see that the setup, what they had set up previously, still functions in the south of the country, and that as Israel's incursion merely along its border, but it's a long border, as it, it moves now to the southwest, there's fierce fighting. There are losses on both sides. Israel says it's found tunnels, including cross-border tunnels that go back into Israel. So all of that, I think, is very significant. Iris Makler in Jerusalem, as always, thank you very much indeed for the clarity you bring to what is an increasingly complex story. Thank you, Iris Makler, our correspondent there. Emmanuel Macron was booed during...